What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and we are back at the church bonfire, ready to continue on. Uh, so just to give you guys a stats update, I know I showed them briefly at the beginning of the last episode, uh, but our vigor is still at 20, even though we are now in the updated patch. Um, 20 is plenty of vigor. I'd say you get probably some of the best scaling up until 20, and you can go higher than that, but this is enough health for me to, to get by, especially when Embered up. Uh, aside from that, um, we obviously had to take quite a bit out of our endurance to be able to use this current weapon, so... Our strength is at 40 and our dex is at 10, basically the minimum that we needed to be able to hand it. Um, having our vitality up at 25 is pretty much perfect. As you can see with our equipment load, we're at 69.7. Uh, if I was to take off the shield, I could put back on my Fallen Knight Helm. And even then, that little bit of weight ratio, that's going to be overcome um, in an upcoming area when we obtain the Ring of Favor, which is a really good ring, probably one of the best rings, if not the best ring in the game. course obviously now we're just starting to work points back into our endurance as we level up so as we continue to level up that's where stats are going to be focused because this thing costs a ton of stamina to use so um from here check my list do, do, do. okay yes outside first grab this roster of knights that'll tell you it's kind of like an online type item. I was curious, it'll tell you who is part of the Dark Moon Knights. But anyway, from here we're going to take a hard right and go grab ourselves a Bone Shard. So those witches that you may remember from earlier, we're going to encounter more of them, as you can see right here. Um, they're kind of hidden, the only thing you can really notice is as you can see their eyes will glow and you'll see the um, <clears throat> that little bit of black mist around them. So. There's a Fading Soul here and one up ahead. Those are kind of like bait items, if you will. The idea is somebody goes to grab those and then they end up getting hit by the witches. We have this poor guy sitting here praying. One more bone. But more importantly, hidden around the back, we have the Undead Bone Shard. Roll down my list. Just want to make sure I'm not overlooking stuff. There we go. Okay. Um, so we got that. Now we're going to head on down the path here. Um, we're going to be taking a left first to get a gold coin and take out some enemies. Another witch right here. A couple, a couple puppy dogs we're going to be taking out. Rest a going coin. Really should block more with my thugs. Kukri, good stuff. And we're gonna head down here. So real fast, we're going to put on our torch. Um, this area is quite dark, and it's filled with the witches. So especially since we can't really one-hand the thugs, um, we're going to be taking things nice and slow. Now you can kind of see a ton of witches down below there. Um, what we're going to do, we want to kind of gather them up. So do I have any, any firebombs? What a pity. Um, that's fine. We can just get them all to gather up and take them out that way. So we're just going to kind of wait by the stairs here. And you can see they're all kind of starting to slowly gravitate towards us. here as well. <laughs> Grab the item while we're waiting for them to crawl on over. Um, so, <clears throat> we don't have to wait for them to crawl. They're not all that important. We're actually just going to head on over here kind of slow as well as you can see very easy to just run past them and get on the ladder which is what we wanted to do in this area oh yeah it looked like we had a couple climbing on up we'll wait for them is there anyone else
else climbing? Yes, there is. Anyone else? Alright. So from here, we want to go onto these catwalks and we want to go across our shriving stone. We have to do a little bit more catwalk play to reach. Actually, I'm not gonna mess with them just because I have a lot of forward momentum when swinging them. So I don't want to get myself off the catwalks accidentally. Roll on down and get the Yorkshire Spear. That's curious. So you can ignore the rest of them. I mean, they're not worth much for souls. Shriving stone, spear. Okay, um, so now we're gonna head down the staircase. A couple more of the invisible witches. Let's keep swinging away. Right, uh, now this first one is gonna be invisible wall. Get the crystal lizard. And then it, each of these subsequent ones are going to have witches. So you're going to want to take all these witches out. Uh, this area is meant to be a bit of an ambush area. Um, what the game's hoping for, at least, is that you just run past these areas. Like, you run over seeing the shiny over there. And then, obviously, get swarmed by the witches. So just swing into each. Make sure you kill all the witches that are there. And that way, you won't end up getting swarmed dead as well. I think they wandered out after me. So over here I have the caster witch. And we'll pick up our blood gem. So from here we're going to go on down and you can see that thing. That's actually um, I call them meowmers. I don't know what the hell they're supposed to be called. But you can kind of hear it. It sounds like a cat in heat for some reason. Um, really odd enemy. But anyway. Um, so we got that. Blood gem. Drop off from the armor. going to sacrifice. We got some large blossoms. Large soul to nameless. Um, we can just roll through this. It's, it's like an automatic slow walk. So just keep rolling. Um, we're going to head on over to that shiny over there. There's going to be two more meowmers guarding Great Heal around the corner from here. See the meowmer is right there. The little white quartz is sticking up. When you're really quiet, so you can hear it. I swear it sounds like a cat in heat. Alright, that one didn't. Maybe this one will. Hear that meow? I swear. Anyway, get great heal. Some more green blossoms, one over there, one over there. Um, there's no more meowmers in the immediate area, so just feel free to roll your way on over all willy nilly. No regard for your life. So, this is actually where there's a split. Um, to continue on in this area, it would go through there. Uh, to head on down to the Irithil Dungeons, which then lead to the Profane Capital with Yorm the Giant. We go this way, but either way, there's a bonfire here, so we're going to grab this first. I'm going to rest on up. Might as well, it doesn't hurt. And then we're going to head down just to reach the next bonfire, just so we have it unlocked. 
Um, so a couple things. Uh, we can drop down there and get a rusty gold coin. Um, the whole thing is kind of designed to be a bait item. I, I wouldn't suggest getting it. You can see these witches are running away. There's a dancer on the left side. Really? You're gonna come back now? You didn't even, you didn't even follow through with your trap. Take her out. Large titanite. Um, now we have a couple witches back there that you can see. And we have another fire knight. We're gonna take him down first. Oh no! I love this throw though. I haven't seen that thing he uses drop yet, but if you can get it, I really hope it comes with the drop. Or not the drop, but the uh, the grab, because that grab is so badass. And so a couple more Meowmers here. I got a Mage Meowmer. Grab the large Titanite. And just for good measure, because I'm just that kind of shitty completionist, I'll go up and I'll grab the gold coin. So the main reason I said to ignore it is just because you know, you're going to take some, some fall damage dropping here. And then you're going to take more fall damage dropping down here. And then usually these witches would jump on you, but we already killed them. So outside, get ready, it is invader time. Too early. Damn, Alba. He just got smashed. And there, the Murakumo. Big fan favorite when it comes to curved weapons. And then we'll go on down and get the Irithyll dungeon up. So we're going to actually save Irithyll Dungeon for a bit later. Um, I want to continue onward mainly to get my Ring of Favor first, but, you know, Irithyll of the Boreal Valley is still, like, over one, so to me it's like, oh, well, I should progress through this spot first. Anyway, so we're going to go back to the Distant Manor. Now, in this next area, we're going to be going through uh, that green lit underpass that you guys saw. Now, there's a bunch of Meowmers in there, uh, a bunch of items. They're all poo-covered. It's just, like, actual dung. Um... The idea with dung is you can throw it at people. If you want to be a smart ass, leave it for somebody else enjoying their game. But um, yeah, there's really no reason to like. You don't need to pick it up. Um, that being said, the meowers are worth about a thousand souls a pop, so that's not too bad. So we're gonna kill them and grab the dung anyway, because once again, just how I am. I need to pick up all that dookie. Not to mention that Fugs just annihilates everything anyway, so... I actually wonder what would happen if I gave some to the crow. Never tried that. Man, the backswing from Fog just took out the one chasing me. That is fantastic. Um, for those curious why I keep calling it Fugs, it's the we actual weapon is the Fume Ultra Greatsword. So, Fugs for short. It's a little bit easier than saying Fume Ultra Greatsword every time I want to refer to the weapon. But yeah, Fugs is a beast. And even though it's not as reminiscent of uh, Guts' weapon as the great sword that we picked up earlier is. When it comes to the heaviest, baddest weapon around, it certainly qualifies under that criteria. All right, now, one item that is important is the poo-covered ashes. Make sure to pick those up. Gotta get all those ashes. Okay, um, so if you had continued on with the Onion Bro quest, he's actually chilling right here. This nest of soup. It's time for a throwback because we're going to be fighting some silver knights. 
So this area can be uh, a little bit tricky. There's one up top that has a great bow, and great bows are not fun to deal with. So what we're going to want to do is get over to here. So we have those pillars as a bit of protection. Run. Wait for our stamina. This one will see us and get him to chase us around the corner. everything apart um, so these urns they can inflict frostbite as you can see um, comes up pretty fast so keep that in mind you know if you start panic rolling there's a good chance you could get hit by it and no one wants that um, swing into here we have some more silver knights we're gonna be taking on now we're gonna try and get this one to come back to us you can see the guy with the great bow just going ham with it Got his attention. Let's roll on down. God, fogs are so good. So, I don't even have to consider parrying them. I just crap all over them. Listen, if you want to trade, you're not going to win. Sorry. That was the easiest I've ever killed those three. Okay, so now we got three chests and some really good items here to pick up. And the first chest we have the Leo Ring. Dun, 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 dun. In the middle chest we have Smo's Great Hammer. Bah, 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 bah. And then the last one we have a Divine Blessing. Yay! Sure, a couple of you are curious. That was a great hammer. Boom. It's a big hammer. At the end of the day, though, it's still not fugs. Still not fugs. Anyway, <coughs> so with these silver knights down, well, he, I wonder if it's either a large titanite or possibly a blessing. Large titanites. Alright, so from outside, we're going to have a large soul, and then um, there's a chance of an invader spawning. He hasn't consistently spawned in all the playthroughs, so I'm not sure if there's something in particular that triggers him. Where's the large soul? I wrote down large soul right outside. Large soul, where are you? Here? No. I really need to make more detailed notes. Large soul and invader. Alright, well, let's just go up. Maybe the invader will show up. The large soul might be up a little ways. That might be my large soul right there. Yes, it is. There we go. Londor Pale Shade. run down here. Maybe he does consistently spawn. Anyway, this guy can be kind of a threat. Um, he does hexes, and man, I'll tell you what. If if your encounter with him is any indication of what hexes are like in this game, hexes are brutal again. So he does do a affinity. Um, don't even give him time to cast. also has the mannequin claws. It's quite aggressive, all in all, for an invader. But, you are no match for fugs! Take him down, and then yourself the mannequin claws. So, really cool weapon. Uh, where are they at? Probably still show you guys the, uh, moveset with them real quick. I don't have the big step. And I thought I was using, I guess I was showcasing a different pair of claws the other day. There's another pair of claws that lets you do like a Wolverine lunging jump. Anyway, um, so from here, we killed the two dogs. We have uh, an invisible caster right here. This being a pain in the ass. More dogs. Now, 
Now, if you're really low on Estus, you can actually sprint right past this. There is a shortcut back to the bonfire up ahead. If you're doing okay, you're using the sprint, right? Down the puppies. Stop that. So we'll ride this up and unlock the gate real fast. This next area can be a little bit of a pain, so just in case we die. I'm actually looking at the time, I think um, we still got a little bit of this area and then the, uh, the actual boss. So I think we'll probably wrap up here and then we will take on the boss of this zone in the next episode well as uh, make it through the subsequent area if we have time. So either way, we are pulling in quite a hefty amount of souls, so I would suggest heading on back and leveling up. And with that being said, we will catch you guys next time as we continue on with more Dark Souls 3.